Comparing fractions. Let's look at a way that we can tell if a fraction is greater than, equal to, or less than another fraction. First, we need to review the meaning of these symbols, less than, equal to, and greater than. Just like when we read words from the left to the right across a page, we read math in the same way. You may be able to look at this problem and tell me what the answer would be for here, but let's talk about why that answer goes there. In this case, 402 and 102, but we're always going to read our problem coming across from the left-hand side of the page to the right-hand of the page. So 402 is what to 102? In this case, 402 is greater than 102. And this symbol right here is the greater than symbol. Now, yes, your first grade teacher was right when she tried to tell you that the alligator always eats the greater number, and that's always true in both cases. But she was just trying to show you which symbol to put where. The symbols do have names, and this symbol is called less than, because the point is that we get to first is the less than side. And this symbol is the greater than side, so it is the greater than symbol. Even though 102 is less than 402, we would never read it backwards, just like we would not try to read a page backwards. We would always read in this direction, 402 is greater than 102. Now I'd like you to press pause after I put the two problems on the page and see if you can read them correctly from left to right. Now remember, all I want you to do is to read the problem from left to right and tell me which symbol would go in there. Go ahead and press pause and read them. Did you get them right? Did you say that 666 is greater than 656? Did you also say that 565 is less than 656? Good job. That may have seemed fairly simple, but what if I ask you if one-third compared to one-fourth? All of a sudden, that doesn't seem quite as simple. How do I know whether it's a greater than, equal to, or less than? Let's think about what a fraction is. It's really telling us how much out of the whole thing. In this case, we have one-fourth. In this case, we have two-fourths. In this case, we have three out of four, because four is the whole thing, and I'm shading in three of the parts. And this last one will shade in four fourths, or the whole thing, because a numerator and denominator, when they're the same, means the whole thing. You can tell by the denominator, or the number on the bottom, how many parts there are in all. Again, this case, there were four, and there are four parts here. The numerator, the number on the top, tells us how many of the parts there are. Please press pause and look at the next two examples and decide which one is bigger based on how many there are out of the whole. Press pause in a moment and decide which one's greater based on the number out of the whole, two-thirds or one-third, and six-tenths or four-tenths. Again, push pause and decide which fraction is greater based on the number out of the whole thing. Did you say that two-thirds was greater than one-third and that six-tenths is greater than four-tenths? I can tell that I have two pieces out of three or one piece out of three, and I'm comparing six pieces out of ten compared to four pieces out of ten. But what does it mean if the denominators are different from each other? For example, one-third and four-tenths. How could we compare those fractions? Do you remember when we made equivalent fractions the other day? Two-thirds, and we wanted an equivalent fraction, so we said that we could do it times two and times two. That's four, and that's six. And yes, that two-thirds is 
equal to 4 sixths because we, now that we've multiplied the numerator and the denominator by the same number, they are equal. We can use that exact same skill to find out if one fraction is greater than or less than another. Let's try. We can easily tell which fraction is greater than the other by finding an equivalent fraction. In this case, I'm going to say 2 fifths and 3 fourths, and I'm going to write them down in this direction just so I can compare them a little more easily. The simplest way is to get a common denominator, and I can do that by multiplying these two numbers together. Let's try. If I do 5 times 4, I'm going to have to do 2 times 4, and that's going to be 8 and 20. And down here, I'm going to multiply this denominator by this denominator, just like I did above. So that's going to be 4 times 5, and then the numerator is the same way, 3 times 5. That's going to be 15. 3 times 5 is 15, and 4 times 5 is 20. Now that I have a common denominator, the same denominator, 20ths and 20ths, I can easily look at the numerator and see how many out of the whole thing. I can tell that this fraction, 15 20ths, is greater than this fraction, 8 20ths. But in this problem up above, which one was greater? The 3 fourths was greater than 2 fifths. So I'm going to make sure to put in that 3 fourths is greater than 2 fifths, but again, I'm going to read it from left to right. 2 fifths is less than 3 fourths. Now you try. Grab your scrap 8.5 by 11 page and solve this problem. 1 fifth compared to 1 half. Go ahead and press pause and show your multiplication on the page and then come back and we'll solve it together. So I'm going to take one fifth and one half. What would be a common denominator for these two? I can get them by multiplying this denominator by this denominator. Let's see if that'll work. Five times two and I have to do the same thing to the numerator, times 2. There's my equal sign because it's an equation, it's equal. That means 1 times 2 is 2, 5 times 2 is 10. I'm going to multiply this denominator by 5 because the denominator above is 5, and that means I have to multiply the numerator by the same number. There's my equal sign and my new fraction bar. 1 times 5 is 5. Oops and 2 times 5 is 10. Now when I look at these two, I have 5 tenths and 2 tenths. Thinking about 5 tenths and 2 tenths, which one is greater? Yes, 5 tenths has 5 out of 10 pieces. That means that this fraction, which was the 1 half, is going to be greater, and that means that 1 fifth is less than 1 half. Try this one in the exact same way. I'll write my fraction, and then you go solve it after you push pause, and then we'll look at it together when you come back. I'll rewrite the problem so that I can show my math. I'm going to multiply them by each other, get a common denominator, so times 5 and times 5. That gives me 5 fifteenths, and this will be times 3 and times 3. Is anybody noticing that I'm just using a dot here instead of a x for my multiplication symbol? That's another way that mathematicians show multiplication. 2 times 3 is 6, and 5 times 3 is 15. Looking at this, I can tell that 6 fifteenths is greater than 5 fifteenths, and that's this fraction down here. So I'm going to come back up and put that 1 third is less than 2 fifths. How did you do? Now I'd like you to turn that same piece of 8.5 by 11 paper over and then turn it sideways so it's horizontal on the page. And then I'd like you to copy these four problems down and solve them, then bring them in with you to class. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.